So after simple interest, we take up this compound interest. Now compound interest is a more popular or rather more prevalent form of calculating interest which is uh, taken up by banks, financial institutions all over the world globally. Compound is a standard form of calculating interest. Now, as mentioned earlier, compound interest has a concept of interest on interest. That's why the word compound comes in. So, <clears throat> which means that if there is a particular principle, the principle at the end of first year would change to P1, which would be the amount which will become P1. That is a separate principle for the second year. Again, interest will be added. The amount for the second year would become the principle for the third year. And hence, every year the interest gets added on the previous year. So definitely, if the interest rate remains the same in compound and simple interest, the amount of interest earned in case of compound interest is more. So often in case there are stray cases of simple interest coming up in practical life, generally simple interest rates are higher than compound interest just to compensate for the lack of earning interest on interest. So basically you have to understand one thing that in compound interest as and one more very important thing for the first year simple interest and compound interest are one and the same of the principal and rate remain the same. The difference start arising, starts arising only from the second year onwards. Yes, so this is what you have compound interest. Now let's take up the various nitty gritties or the finer aspects of compound interest. So you have here first <coughs> the compound interest formula wherein the amount is equal to P into 1 plus R by N raised to T into N. Now what is this N? N is the number of times the interest is compounded. Say for example, suppose it is 12% per annum and compounded annually. Suppose it is compounded annually, then the amount is going to be P into 1 plus 12 by 1, okay, which is going to be 0 0.12 is R by 1, which is 1 itself, raised to T into N. That is nothing but it's going to be 1. So it's going to be calculated suppose for two years and it's going to be two and it's going to be done only once per year so it's n. Suppose the same thing is told 12% per annum compounded half yearly or semi-annually. In that case the same amount would be the same principle become 1 plus 12 has to be divided by 2 because there are two semi-annual uh, periods in a year. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. So the rate is going to be 0 0.06 and the number of such half years, the number of such half years would become 2 into 2, 4. So in that case, the amount is going to be 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to, sorry, 2 into 2 it is. So 2 into 2 raised to 4. So it's the same principle, same amount, same rate of interest, but in the second case, you're compounding it half yearly and there is bound to be a marginal difference in the value. This value will definitely be more than this particular value because there is a compounding happening. Although you have also correspondingly reduced the, uh, you have proportionately reduced the rate of interest and increased the uh, number of uh, N, the period, but overall the value would become a little more over here. So. So, and compound interest is going to be A minus P, which is going to be P into 1 plus R by N raised to 2 into N. So, P into 1 plus R by N raised to T N minus 1. This could be the formula for compound interest, where N is equal to 1 when interest is compounded annually for every year. N is equal to 2 when interest is compounded half yearly because there are two half year period. N is equal to 4 when interest is compounded quarterly. That is, there are 12 one month period and N is uh, 4 uh, quarter periods. And N is 12 when interest is compounded monthly. And N is 24 when interest is compounded fortnightly or once in 15 days. And N is 365 when interest is compounded daily. In that case, the rate will also have to be distributed distributed or rather divided by 365. 
So suppose the 10% interest, so it's going to be 0 0.10 divided by 365 raised to 365 is what you get. So this is what is the formula for compound interest, right? So these are certain quantities we need to be clear about before we start the concept of compound interest. Now often in all this there are many calculations that may be involved. There may be cases wherein the principal would be given, rate would be given, N would be given and you may have to calculate compound interest. Or you may have a case wherein the compound interest and rate N would be given, you have to find principal. And also there may be cases where may you have to cal calculate N. Now in any of these calculations, we are, you are, the candidate is allowed to use a simple calculator not a scientific calculator, but uh, certain calculations would require more complex calculations. Hence, the student has to be aware of how to use the calculator effectively to find various types of values or solutions to quantities like cube root of a number or tenth root of a number. How do you multiply by a number by itself? So we will be taking a small exercise on how to use the calculator effectively for a few complex calculations taking into account the fact that you will not be allowed a scientific calculation. So let's go on with that. 